ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you. What an absolute pleasure to be here. Quick question, who here owns a Ferrari? <laughs> Seriously, not a single one. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I saw something that you don't see every single day. It was an accident between a Ferrari and a VW Golf. By the time that I arrived, the VW Golf was on one side of the road and it was a little shorter than it was meant to be originally. And on the other side of the road was this what used to be a six foot three gleaming red Ferrari, but was now a four foot two slightly more crunchy Ferrari. And you drive past that and you think to yourself, that's a really bad day for some wealthy individual. And it's not something you see every day. So I pulled my car over and I put a little uh, comment on Facebook and I said, let's have a moment of silence for the mighty fallen, never again to go from naught to 100 in 6.3 or 3.6 seconds. And the reaction that I got from some of my friends on Facebook was interesting. People said, they didn't say things like, oh, what a shame, what a pity, ah, oh, what a loss. They said, serves him right. <laughs> and the hatred just kept on coming. One comment after another. How can he drive a car like that in a country like this? Our roads are wrong for it. He was probably drunk. One person stopped just short of accusing him of being a child molester. <laughs> And it was fascinating to me just to see the level of hatred aimed at this Ferrari driver. Now here's the interesting bit about it. The only information that I put on Facebook was, there has been an accident between a Golf and a Ferrari. That's it. We don't know who was wrong. We don't know if it was the Golf driver who made the mistake. We don't know if a dog didn't run across the road and cause this thing. But what was interesting is it showed up a belief system that most of us don't even know we have. It's a bias against the rich. It's fascinating. Now, in a room like this, we are all studying and working toward building careers, building futures, becoming high net worth individuals. Let me ask you a question. Do you reckon you can become a high net worth individual at the same time as hating wealthy people? It's a self-limiting belief and it actually gets in the way. But what's fascinating is that the kind of thinking that is handed down to us from generation to generation is invisible. <laughs> it, it was once beautiful, wasn't it? <laughs> and I'm not the only person who's, uh, who's actually seen this in motion. Anybody here watch Top Gear? Yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Top Gear fans, join me for a moment here. The rest of you can just go to sleep. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson says, in the United States, you watch a person drive by in a Bentley and the reaction is, one day I'll be in one of those. And he says it's different in Britain. He says in Britain, you watch a guy drive past in a Bentley and you say, one day I'll have him out of that. <laughs> That's a bit more sinister, isn't it? A little bit darker. And it's really interesting because particularly in South Africa, we have spent decades trying to unravel a belief system about racism that's been handed down from generation to generation. But we are not aware of other beliefs that are handed down to us, particularly beliefs about wealthy people. And here we all are chasing these goals and chasing these lives while at the same time feeling uncomfortable about talking about money or talking about wealthy people as though they are obviously evil, they come from the devil. Let's take a look at how this thinking is created, how it's generated, how it's handed down from generation to generation, and how it can stop you from achieving your goals. The point is to unravel it, get it out of our minds, excise it, be rid of it, be free of it, so that we can actually chase the goals that we have in life and become all God intended us to be.